Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Lori, in the Connecticut League of Conservation Voters for having this important 2023 Environmental Summit and for having me speak on the topic of bears. My name is Annie Hornish and I'm the Connecticut State Director for the Humane Society of the United States, our nation's largest animal welfare organization. Next slide, please. Um, the HSUS is happy to be part of the Connecticut Coalition to Protect Bears. Through educational outreach and legislative advocacy, we promote the proven non-lethal strategies that allow people in Connecticut's native black bears to coexist peacefully. This year, we are supporting legislation that would ban feeding of bears, create a grant program for community-wide conflict resolution programs, reduction programs, and support humane policies for orphaned bear cubs. Our coalition is broad in its scope, composed of animal protection organizations, environmental organizations, and farmers. Next slide, please. First, a little background. The latest population study done in 2014 by Yukon researchers estimated only 400 adult bears statewide, and the population of bears has not been studied since. The 2014 Yukon study highlighted that every sighting is not a unique bear, but rather multiple sightings of the same bear. So sightings do not equal population. The overwhelming majority of reported incidents with bears involve the minor inconveniences of bears getting into trash and toppling bird feeders, which could be avoided with simple modifications to human behavior. Next slide. Uh, Connecticut currently does not allow bear hunting. Only under certain limited circumstances can a bear be killed. As you might expect, current state law allows the deep commissioner to kill a bear if there is a public health or safety threat. Next slide. Thank you. Three reports from the Office of Legislative Research going back 13 years all attest to this. The laws have been clear enough to both prosecute poaching cases and for DEEP to allow farmers under limited circumstances to kill bears. Next slide. In recent years, there have been reports of increased incidents with black bears, commonly termed, termed human bear conflicts. Most interactions occur because bears are smart, opportunistic feeders who can smell food from great distances. It is critical for Connecticut residents not to unintentionally lure bears to their yards with bird feeders, trash, and other food attractants, especially in the fall when bears are fattening up for the winter. Next slide. Problematic human behavior results in bears becoming conditioned to human food, which are often high calorie, appetizing, and easy meals for bears. Bears can also get too comfortable around people. This is called habituation. It's important that bears, uh, that I'm sorry, that people remove food attractants and make sure that bears are not comfortable around us. Next slide. So how do we reduce human bear conflicts? Next slide. First, first let's dispense, oh, I'm sorry, I think we're down one slide. Another one, please. please. Yep, okay, thank you. First, uh, let's, let's dispense with the notion that hunting is the solution. Researchers in other states have found that hunts do not eliminate nuisance complaints because bears killed deep in the woods are not the same bears who people complain about in more developed areas where hunting wouldn't even be safe. These studies show that human bear conflicts are closely correlated with food availability. A recent 2022 study even found that hunting may increase human bear interactions. Next slide. Bottom line is that hunting is the wrong tool for the job and like any wrong tool is ineffective and can make the problem worse. So what does work to reduce human bear conflicts? Next slide, please. The science shows that community-based public education works. Teaching people about the benefits of black bears to our ecosystems and understanding their bear behavior. Teaching people about the need to remove food attractants and properly protect chickens and livestock and the need for responsible behavior, like keeping dogs on leashes while hiking. And it also, also it's 
it's about teaching people how to train bears to stay away from human neighborhoods by making them uncomfortable with negative stimuli, in a sense, hazing them with yelling or blowing a whistle. And if a bear becomes habituated, aversive conditioning by trained professionals can be done, like beanbag bullets or use of curly and bear dogs. And finally, laws passed and enforced can work to reduce conflicts. In other areas of the country with far more bears, conflicts are fewer because people have learned how to not attract bears into human neighborhoods. These strategies are effective, supported by the science, and humane. And the good news is that, next slide please, the people of Connecticut also want humane solutions to conflicts with wildlife. A 2018 study found that public desire for people for peaceful coexistence with wildlife is growing all across America, including here in Connecticut. In our state, only 1% of the population hunts. Hikers, bird watchers, mountain bikers, and horseback riders greatly outnumber hunters in Connecticut. This study also found that deeps values are misaligned with that of the Connecticut public. A factor um, for this cultural misalignment may be due to financial incentive. The federal Pittman-Robinson Act funding too deep is dependent on the volume of hunting licenses and the volume of gun and ammunition sales. Next slide, please. This results in a bias by deep to continually promote bear trophy hunting and other types of hunting in spite of the public not wanting it. Deep has been after a bear trophy hunt since 2013, prior to their even knowing the bear population. Next slide, please. This bias is exposed when they continually try to conflate sightings with population. Um, the higher population is lately being used as a, as a fear-mongering technique to try to help facilitate public support for a hunt. But when people report a bear, it's usually multiple calls on that one bear, and that same bear is likely reported multiple times. This is why sightings is neither a reliable nor science-based indicator of population size. This is why decreasing the overall population with hunting won't reduce conflicts. You can have one bear living in a human neighborhood causing a lot of conflicts. And we'll move faster through these slides. Um, and here's an example. Uh, this photo was taken in the McLean Game Refuge in Granby. Um, this is within a game refuge um, requesting that people call about bear sightings. That's where bears ought to be. But this is in order to drive up the sightings. Next slide. You may hear in the paper the term exponential growth. Uh, that is not accurate when we're talking about bear populations. Bear, bear populations are very slow to grow due to a wide variety of mortality factors. Next slide, please. And finally, um, there's a, a deep bias is observed when we see poor investigations of bear killings. One of the recent examples is the 2022 poaching of Bobby, a docile bear beloved by the Newtown community. Bobby was killed by an off-duty officer who shot, stalked, and killed Bobby with an AR-15 in a residential neighborhood and then tampered with evidence. Bobby's killing sparked outrage within the Newtown community, both for Bobby and because of the violation of their hard-earned local gun ordinance in the wake of the Sandy Hook massacre. At the hands of Deep, Bobby's cubs would have died if it were not for the immediate intervention by animal advocates in five amazing state representatives. The Honorable Representatives David Michelle, who's here with us today, Nicole Clarides de Tria, Rahib Ali Brennan, Ann Hughes, who is here with us today, thank you, Representative, and Mitch Belinsky. It's difficult to find a more dramatic example of deep misalignment with the values of the people of Connecticut. Next slide, please. And DEEP needs to implement humane policies that reflect what the people want. Next slide. And in closing, legalizing a hunt under the guise of reducing human bear conflicts and habituation is misleading the public, and that is an abuse of the public trust. There is no scientific evidence that hunting will prevent human bear conflicts or the habituation of bears. 
and hunting might make the situation worse. The solution to human bear conflicts is attractant reduction, largely through community-based public education. It's a people problem, not a bear problem. Thank you all for your time and attention.